Hello and welcome to this video on mapping XY data in Tableau uh, for sport. So this is the second video in the series and um, we're going to continue on with where we left off in the previous video, which I'd suggest you check out if you're if you're brand new to, to Tableau or you just want a refresher of where we're at. So let's just have a look. So this is where we left off. We created a, a very, very simple uh, dashboard just to be able to interact between team events and some player information here on the right. So we're going to continue with the same data set, which is from StatsBomb, and I've included a link in the video title that you can go and download this data set if you want to follow along with exactly what I'm doing. So let's go to a new sheet. So in this case, what I want to do, this data set has XY data, which essentially means it has the coordinates of where events happened on a pitch. And I'd like to go and just create something off the back of that. Okay, now if I type in, so this on the left hand side is my full list of fields, which you can see is, is quite a lot in this data set. So I'm going to just search for anything here with the location data. And when Tableau brings in events, it splits them as we talked about into two parts. So above this line are dimensions, which are text and date fields, and below the line are, are numeric values or numbers. Now, it usually does a pretty good job of deciphering what data should be what, but it doesn't always. And we can see in this case, if I go back to the data source tab here, we can see these two columns, location and location one, which is essentially our, our X and our Y, has for whatever reason been read in as text, okay, rather than as a numeric value. So you can change it here in this window, or you can change it in the, the main interface itself. And it's really simple, just click on the icon and I want to make these a decimal number. Now Tableau would still treat those as, as a kind of text. We'd get a list. We'd get a list. So if I drag location zero out now, I'm going to get a list of all of the locations logged within this, this data set. Okay, so it warns me, are you sure? And you can see I get a, a list of these. And sometimes you do want a list in my case, I, I don't. I want to use these as a numeric field, so as a measure, essentially. So I'm going to drag them below this line so they become a measure. Now, for this video, I'm not going to do anything with the other locations, uh, but you, you would repeat these steps. So change them to numeric values and drop them into the measure fields here. So you can see you have all sorts of different locations in terms of goalkeeper actions, shot end locations, that kind of stuff but it's the same principle just with the other ones. Okay, so let's drag it in. Location zero is the X coordinate. So that means it'll go left to right. So they'll be the columns. And location one would be the Y, which goes up and down, and that will be the rows. Now, when we drag this in, it kind of looks like it didn't work. So what Tableau has given us is this one single dot in a scatter plot. So what's happened here? Well, Tableau has summed up all of the location zeros and given us an answer, 173,000. And it's done the same with location one, and that sums up to 124,000, okay? Now we want each individual dot or a dot per something. Uh, and we have to tell Tableau how we'd like to break that down. And that would be known as the level of detail within the visualization. So. We want a dot for each event, for each player, for each whatever it happens to be, okay? Um, and we do that by adding a dimension to one of these fields here. So detail, color, label, size, that kind of stuff. Uh, and in this case, we have an event ID. So an event ID is a unique number given to every event in this data set, okay? So we can use this to break it down. So I'm gonna add event ID to the detail. And what you will see now in a second is that one dot will become thousands of dots. Now my pitch is already loaded here because I was testing this, but let me go back and remove it. Okay, so this is what uh, you should be looking at now is this collection of dots on a screen, but we don't have the pitch in the background, which is what we want to add. But this is saying, show me the location zero and location one for every event ID in here. All right. Now, just for argument's sake, let's say I was to put event type onto detail. I get about 20 marks here. 
So this is the total of all the passes. This is the total of all the ball receipts. Again, this is, is fairly meaningless, very meaningless in fact, um, but that's just what Tableau is doing. It's saying, right, for each event type, we'll give you the sum of the locations here on one. Okay, so it's important you understand what Tableau is doing here in terms of breaking down the data and you want a dot per what and that you can put on the detail. Okay, so again, it's event ID for us. So let's add our pitch. Uh, now let me just jump to uh, this document here. So this is the document provided by uh, StatsBomb. It's on their GitHub page. Um, so it explains all of the definitions of the terms that they use, uh, the timestamps, all the data. So really comprehensive. And again, if you're not familiar with the data set, it's worth a look. The thing I'm interested in right now is the pitch coordinates. So every data provider, every data set really will have uh, potentially its own pitch coordinates. Okay. And you just, you should hopefully be able to get access to a document like this, where they tell you where each of the points were. Okay. It's not vital in this case that I have every single point. Really what I'm looking for is it'll start at zero and go to what is the last X coordinate here. And likewise, from top to bottom, what is it? So this pitch, for example, is 120 long by 80 uh, up and down. Okay. And once I know that, then I can add my pitch to this. So I'm going to go up to map, background images, select my data set, and I'm going to add an image here. I'm going to browse for it. And do, 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 do. Down here, I have uh, this pitch here, okay? Now, I'm using this one because it has no white space around it, okay? You'll see some of the other ones have a little bit of white space, uh, and you just have to account for that in, in the next step that I'm going to do, but this is the easiest one to use. Uh, zero white space around any of it, so the pitch coordinates will match the coordinates that StatsBomb have given us uh, exactly as they should, okay? So now we tell it what the coordinates are. So we've got the X field, which is basically goal line to goal line. We know that that's 120. So it starts, zero is the left, 120 is the right end. The Y field, the bottom here is 80 and the top is zero. So I'm gonna click okay and okay. Now this looks right, but just one kind of word of warning I would tell you here is just make sure you have this Y axis set correctly, okay? So in this StatsBomb data, uh, zero is the top and 80 is the bottom, okay? Here, 80 has become the top. Now we can fix this, but again, just a word of warning that you've got your two uh, wings the right way around. So let's edit the axis here. I'm going to actually fix it because I, I want this pitch to always be seen and I'm going to just give it a little bit of white space. So let's say five and 85. And the important bit here is I'm going to reverse this. So see that checkbox it's going to be reversed. So 80 is on the bottom, which is great. And I'm going to edit the other axis as well and just make give that again the same space. So minus five to 125. So I'm just adding five um, to the coordinates here, just to give it a little bit of room to breathe. Now, once you've done this, you can right click and uncheck the show header because that won't mean anything to anybody, but suddenly your coordinates have become a lot more meaningful in terms of where the actions have happened. So let's tidy this up. Let's start to filter it, see what more we can, we can do with it. Okay, so the first one is I could right click on event type here and show filter and you see I got a list of my events. So for example, if I wanted to know where did the jewels happen, I can just select a single event. And I can make this filter much easier. Let's say it's a single value drop down. So I want to know clearances, not surprisingly, all around the box, uh, it could be fouls and so on and so on. So you can pick from any number, same like passes, you're going to see a lot of passes here, pressure, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you can now filter event by event by event. I could do the same with the players. So I could right click on player name and show filter. 
And again, I could say, right, show me Harry Kane's events. So these are Harry Kane's passes. Let's say all here. So these are all the things that Harry Kane has been involved in. Okay, so again, you can very quickly build something which starts to paint a picture of where player played, what his most common tasks are. And again, we can build in layers to this as we go. So let's finish with, with building something maybe a little bit more practical than, than this here now. Okay, so let's look at shots. So let's take shots. Uh, we can say all players, which is fine. Okay, but I do want to break this down by the teams. So I'm going to grab my team name and I want two pitches. So I want one for Liverpool and one for Tottenham in this case. So I'm going to put team name onto the columns and that splits it left and right. If I put it on the rows, it would put one on top of the other. So again, depending on your dashboard or how you might eventually want to lay this out, you can very easily split this between the two teams. Okay, let's look at, uh, there's an XG, expected goals, uh, in here. Again, for those that don't know, you can go off and Google that. Basically, it's a, a measure of how good or, how, yeah, how good the shot, the shot chance was. So I'm going to put expected goals. I'm going to put it on the size here. And I'm going to grab team name and put that onto the color. And let's make these a filled circle. Okay, so suddenly we're looking at all the chances in this particular game, the 2019 Champions League final. This is all shots by all players and I can start to hover over and see. Okay, now in this case, when I'm hovering over, I'm getting what's known as the tooltip and it contains everything I've used. So you can see the X and Y coordinates in there, the team name, the XG at the big number as well, the event ID. And a lot of this maybe doesn't doesn't mean anything to anybody. So let's just tidy this up. Let's put player name onto tooltip here. We want the XG. We also want the outcome. So do we have a shot outcome name? Yeah, shot outcome name. We can put that on the tooltip as well. And now I'm going to click on the tooltip. And you see it brings up a little text editor and I can go in and kind of tidy this up now. So anything in the angle brackets is actually the um, the data. Anything else is kind of free text that you can you could play around with. So you can play around with the, the design of this yourself. I'm going to say that it was that player and the shot outcome. We'll put there. We don't need the event ID. Maybe the XG is important. We tell people what that is and the rest we can probably get rid of. Let's click OK and let's have a look at that. OK. So now I can begin to hover over each of these and see who was the player, what was the outcome, what was the expected goal based off that. Okay. And there's things you could play around with here. So you could make these shapes. Uh, and let's put the outcome. So shot outcome onto the shape. And we could make gold or square and everything else is a circle. Let's do filled. I've now made a mistake. So when I look at this, it didn't, it doesn't look right. And that's because when I looked at the XG, it's text and I never change it to a numeric value. So Tableau reads this almost like alphabetical. So instead of the, the higher number being the bigger size, it's, it's come up with a, a different way of doing this. Okay. So this is really common. And to be honest, once when I was learning Tableau, this was one of the biggest frustrations I had was just really not understanding those data types and why Tableau treats them differently. So even though that XG looks like a number to me, Tableau isn't really treating it as that. It was really simple to solve. As I said, you can go grab, make sure it's a decimal number and then drag it down so that it's treated as a measure. Okay. But just understanding those two things there 
is really important. And now if I was to drop that onto size, we should get a very different picture. And we do. Okay. So we can see that despite uh, Spurs chances in close, the XG of them, the, the quality of them wasn't quite the same. Where Mo Salah has had a, a really, really good opportunity here. And I think Origi uh, has had a, a decent opportunity over here. Okay. And you can play around with, you know, how big you want to make those and how you want to design those out. But that's kind of idea how you would begin to build something with, with XY data. Okay, so we can call this our shop map. And again, we'd be able to add that to a dashboard and we could build the same one for passes or fouls or really any events now we could begin to, to filter and build up in the same way. Okay, thank you very much.